So in some sense, Moja could be seen as Python 4.0. I would not say that. I think that would drive a lot of people really crazy. Because of the PTSD of the 3.0, 2.0. I'm willing to annoy people about Emacs versus Vim or but about not that versus Spaces. But not that one. I don't know. That might be a little bit far even for me. Like my th my skin may not be that thick. But, but the, the point is the step to it being a superset and allowing all of these capabilities, I think, is the evolution of a language. It feels like an evolution of a language. So he he's interested by the ideas that you're playing with, but also concerned about the fragmentation. So how, what are the ideas you've learned? What are you thinking about? How do we avoid fragmenting the community where the, the, the Pythonistas and the, uh, I don't know what to call the mojo people. Uh, magicians. The magicians, yeah, I like it. <laughs> there you uh, go. Can coexist happily and and share code and basically just have these big code bases that are using uh, C Python and more and more moving yeah, towards mojo. Yeah. Well, so again, th these are lessons I learned from Swift and, and here we face very similar problems, right? In Swift, you have Objective-C, super dynamic, uh, they're very different syntax, <laughs> right? But you, you're talking to people who have large scale code bases. I mean, Apple's got the biggest, largest scale code base of Objective C code, right? And so, you, you know, none of the companies, none of the iOS developers, none of the other developers want to rewrite everything all at once. And so you want to be able to adopt things piece at a time. And so, a thing that I found that worked very well in the Swift community was saying, okay, cool. And this is when Swift was very young. As you say, okay, you have a million line of code Objective-C app, don't rewrite it all. But when you implement a new feature, go implement that new class using Swift, mm -hmm. right? And so now this turns out is a very wonderful thing for an app developer, but it's a huge challenge for the compiler team and the systems people that are implementing mm -hmm. this, right? And this comes back to what is this trade-off between doing the hard thing that enables scale versus doing the theoretically pure and ideal thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so Swift had adopted and built a lot of different machinery to deeply integrate with the Objective-C runtime. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the same thing with Python, right? Now, what, what happened in the case of Swift is that Swift as a language got more and more and more mature over time, right? And uh, incidentally, Mojo is a much simpler language than Swift in many ways. And so I think that Mojo will develop way faster than Swift for a variety of reasons. Um, but as the language gets more mature, in parallel with that, you have new people starting new projects, right? And so if, when the language is mature and somebody's starting a new project, that's when they say, okay, cool, I'm not dealing with a million lines of code. I'll just start and use the new thing for my whole stack. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, again, you come back to where communities and where people that work together, you build a new subsystem or a new feature or a new thing in Swift, or you build a new thing in Mojo, then you want to be in, end up being used on the other side, <laughs> right? And so then you need to work on integration back the other way. And so it's not just Mojo talking to Python, it's also Python talking to Mojo, mm -hmm. right? And so what I would love to see, and the, I don't want to see this next month, right? But what I want to see over the course of time is I would love to see people that are building these packages, like, you know, NumPy or, uh, you know, TensorFlow or, what, you know, the, these packages that are half Python, half C++. And if you say, okay, cool, I want to get out of this Python C++ world into a unified world, and so I can move to Mojo, but I can't give up all my Python clients. Because mm -hmm. they're like, these libraries get used by everybody, and they're not all gonna switch every, all, all, you know, all at once, and maybe never, right? Well, so the way we should do that is we should vend Python interfaces to the Mojo types. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did in Swift, and it worked great. I mean, it was a huge implementation challenge for the compiler people, right? But um, there's only a dozen of those compiler people and there are millions of users. And so it's a very expensive, capital intensive, like skill set intensive problem. But once you solve that problem, it really helps adoption. It really helps the community progressively adopt technologies. And so I think that this approach will work quite well with, with the Python and the Mojo world. So for a package, port it to Mojo and then create a Python interface. Yep.